And so we've been here for 28 years. Yeah. And when we um, bought the house, the yard was an absolute jungle. In fact, where we're standing right now was driveway. And uh, that lasted until about three years ago when we got some help. The wonderful people at Laurelville Gardens came in and helped us chop up all the concrete uh, and then put grass down. And we had had a pond over here where we'd taken out an old overgrown ewe and decided it would be really neat to have the pond there. So we relocated the pond to here and made it a little bit bigger. And now you can hear the water no matter where you are in the garden. Um, and we have a bunch of fish who are very happy and winter over every year. Um, and we've got, so we're gardening on three levels here, really. Uh, and for a very long time we had almost no sun because we had great big overgrown trees uh, which have either rotted or we've taken them down one by one. So for a very long time this was the only sunny spot in the garden. So that's where the herb garden is. When my parents left their big house and moved into Folkways, uh, we came into the armillary sphere. And I think we have it set accurately. Um, did we change it to daylight saving time? Yes. Okay. Change it to daylight saving time. Um, and gradually, you know, sort of a year at a time, we've done sort of one garden at a time. So we started back here. And one year we had sunflowers that were, we got a great picture of Steve with our son, who was then a baby, sitting on his shoulders and the sunflowers towering over both of them. Um, and then we put in the arch, so it's been my hope to have the roses actually climb over the arch, and this is the first year that they've made it pretty much all the way, which is very, very exciting. Uh, and we've got a clematis here that's doing better this year than it ever has. And this peony and that one came from my grandmother's house in Flower Town. And she brought them with her from her mother's house in Germantown. And her mother brought them with her from their home in Pittsburgh. So these peonies are probably about 100 years old. Uh, and keep on going strong. And, and the crepe myrtle uh, was another rescue from my parents' house. And will, by the end of the season, be, oh, eight feet tall, I guess. Um, we struggle with the goutweed, which another person just called devilweed, which sounds right to me uh, on the bank. The vinca does a pretty good job of choking it out, although not perfect. Uh, and this little boxwood we rescued, we had a sailboat for a while, and we kept it at a place down on the Delaware River, and they were doing some landscaping there, and they had this little boxwood just dug up and thrown by the, somebody taking an axe to it, so it was, they were going to throw it out, and I can't let anybody throw anything like that out, so... Uh, we rescued it, and it's been very happy down here. It seems to be doing really well. And, and we try down here and up there to have something going on all the time during the year. So you see all our flattened daffodils here. In the beginning of March, I guess, it was just an absolute ribbon of gold right down here. A bunch of different kinds. I think I have maybe four different kinds of narcissus. Uh, and then until about a week ago, this is Virginia bluebell. Uh, and it was blooming all gorgeous pink and blue. Uh, and I've got a white, little white azalea that I think we had some trouble with a drought a couple years ago, so I'm trying to coax it to come back. Uh, oh, and, and we've got and we have a, a really super gardening friend um, who gave us these black jack in the pulpit. I'm not, they're almost past it now, but they're so cool and they come back every year. Uh, we've only got about five of them, but. If you lift this, you can see the little preacher in there. And, and the acanthus, we saw on a trip in Italy a few years ago, and it should, if it flowers this year, it should have a big, tall flower stalk with uh, blue flowers on it. So I'm really hoping that that'll do the trick this year.